In this tutorial, I'm going to run through the techniques used in the sweater on the mannequin behind me. This tutorial is sponsored by Love Knitting, and this is their wonderful woolly sweater. I actually had to look to make sure I got the name right. I always want to say wonderfully woolly sweater. Wonderful woolly sweater. And this is a free pattern, and um, all of this is brought to you by Love Knitting and their paint box yarns. This yarn used in this sweater is the Wool Chunky Mix. It is half wool and half acrylic. It feels great. When I say acrylic, you don't always think of something that feels great. This yarn feels great and it's machine washable. And I have a bunch of colors here, which is just a small sampling of the colors available um, uh, in this yarn, in this paint box yarn. And when you get your free pattern, you'll see that the last page is just colors of yarn that you can choose from. And the color that I've used on the sweater is the same one that they used in the pattern, which is vintage pink. It's very pretty, it's a very pretty color. Um, and the colors I have here are sailor blue, buttercup yellow, this one I've been using, it's like only half a hank in here, marine blue, I've been using that a lot, pillar red, Pansy purple and I think this is slate. I didn't write it on here. <laughs> I know I'm gonna have to get my glasses so I can see what color this is. I'll let you know in the show notes what color this is. Um, this sweater has I think seven different sizes and it's uh, a free pattern like I said. I'm going to put this at an advanced beginner level. Love Knitting puts this at an intermediate level, um, but I think with the tutorial, if you are good at knitting and purling, casting on, reading patterns a little bit, I think you're going to be okay because um, I'll show you how to do everything else. Now the construction of this sweater is excellent for a first sweater. If you've never knit a sweater before, this is a great way to take on sweater knitting because it's kind of no fail. You can't mess this up. You end up with a perfect fit every time. It is top down and top down sweaters let us actually try on the sweater before we separate the sleeves from the body so that we know that the whole shoulder sleeve, everything bust is going to fit okay. And um, of course, I'm going to demonstrate how to do that. Now, this sweater specifically has some back neck shaping. It's a little bit longer in the back neck, the front, which is really nice fit. Top down raglan. Um, it has what I've heard called bracelet length sleeves, which I think is nice. It's three quarter length sleeves. I like to say bracelet length sleeves now that I've learned that. And then it has a brioche rib collar which um, you can see in the photo, the pattern photo, and on my sweater, it looks really good. It is a beautiful, thick, smooshy collar. Um, okay, so if you click the little eye in the upper right-hand corner, that will take you to my website where I will have a link to the Love Knitting website where you can download your pattern and order your yarn. And up next, we're going to talk about getting the pattern ready and casting on and working the back neck shaping. Okay, if you have your pattern and you've ordered your yarn, we are ready to go. And if you're unsure about whether this is too advanced, if you're kind of a newer knitter, um, just go ahead and watch this video and see how it goes and see if you, if you can give it a try. Um, the first thing that we always should do, well, there are two first things we should always do when we're working on something. You wanna knit a swatch, but you also wanna take your pattern and go through and um, circle the numbers that apply to you for your size. Now, in this pattern, uh, as in most patterns, when there are different sizes, um, there'll be different numbers that apply to the different sizes. You know, cast on this number for the smallest size, this number for the next size, all the way up to the largest size. And usually the first number will be outside of parentheses and then everything else will be in parentheses with a comma between them. So take a pen and underline or circle the size that applies to you so that when you are really with your mind into the sweater and knitting everything, you don't have to go through and figure all that out. You can just glance at it and see exactly where you are in the pattern. So that's always a good policy. Um, the next is to knit a swatch. And um, I, I just wanted to use as many colors of yarn as possible. Um, you, this pattern is 14 stitches and 18 rows over four inches. So the easiest thing to do is just cast on 14 stitches and knit for 18 rows. And if what you end up with is a four by four square, you're great, that's good. Um, you also should wash and block your swatch. This yarn is machine washable, but then set out flat to dry. So you want to treat the swatch exactly the way that you're gonna treat the finished sweater. So machine wash your swatch, set it out flat to dry, and then do that before you measure. And we are just about to dive in um, with the hand cam so I can show you what I have here. 
Anything else I want to say before we get there? I'll cover it later if I forgot anything. Let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, here is my swatch, and you see I did four rows of just plain knitting before I started, and then I also cast on 24 stitches, so I had five stitches on either side of, um, of garter stitch, and it just helps it to lay flat. I like it. It's, um, it's, I always do my swatches like this. And then you see here I have four inches by four inches just right I got my swatch on the first try oh I just thought of something I wanted to say um, the pattern calls for uh, US size 10 and 3 quarter needles which a lot of us do not have in our knitting sets I got the correct gauge using 10 and a half so no problem there okay so the first thing you're gonna do is uh, cast on the this number for your, your size and I've already got that cast on here. And we're going to work back and forth in rows before we join in the round and uh, to build up the back of the neck a little bit. And I want to I want to cover this with you because there's it's I've never seen it works like this. And I'm actually really impressed with this pattern for doing this. So um, I cast on 40. I cast on the smallest size here and row one. I'm going to it's actually a wrong side row. I'm going to purl three. And whoops, place a marker, purl six, place a marker, then purl twenty two. And you see, when I pull my yarn back like that, I'm just tightening up the purl stitch. The first couple, I usually do that. I should have put a marker in at 22 because I can never count and be on video at the same time. So I talk to the camera. And this is kind of a slow row because it's the cast on row. Do you know what I'll do? I'll just keep going until I have nine left on the other side. Wow, I didn't even know I was that close. Okay, place a marker. Purl six. Place a marker and then purl three to the end. Okay, that was kind of our setup row. Okay, now we are going to cable cast on two stitches. Now at the end of this row, we're going to cable cast on two stitches. So turn the work, and this is how you work a cable cast on. I'm going to put the needle between the edge stitch and the next stitch, wrap it and pull it through. And you can pull that stitch pretty long, and then once you get it long like this, twist it to put it up on the needle and tighten it a little bit, but not very much, because we're going to do another one. It's easier if things are loose. Put your needle in between the two stitches. You see where I'm doing it is just right here. Wrap it, pull it through, and then twist it when you put it on the stick, on the needle. Tighten that up. We just cast on two using the cable cast on uh, method. And I'm going to show you that again, because we have more coming up. And on this row, on, on row two, we're going to start the raglan increases that is everything that makes up a raglan sweater are these increases at these four points. And we're going to start those here. So I'm going to knit across these stitches that I just cast on. Whoopsie. Okay, knit to one stitch before the next marker. I'm going to make one right, which means I'm going to pull up the bar between the two stitches, put my uh, left needle in from back to front, and then knit 
into that stitch kind of the normal way. And then I'm going to knit one stitch, slip the marker, and make one left. I'm going to pull up the bar between those two stitches and put my left needle in from back to front. And then I'm going to knit that stitch through the back loop. Now I'm going to do this a few more times, but if you want to see a short technique video that is just devoted to make one stitches, I will go ahead and put a link in the upper right hand corner. And then I'm going to knit to the next, or one stitch before the next marker. Pull that up, do a make one right, put my needle in from back to front, and knit that stitch through the front loop. Knit one, slip marker, and now I'm going to do a make one left. Pull up the bar between the two stitches, put my needle in from back to front, and then knit that stitch through the back loop. Then I knit up to the next one. You're going to get really used to making, making one right, knitting one, slipping a marker, making one left, because that is most of this sweater. Most of the shaping of this sweater, all of the shaping of the sweater is done this way. One stitch before the marker. Make one right. Knit one. Slip marker. Make one left. Now in this one, I'm going to show you a couple little tricks that I do. Make one right. Um, to, make, to get my needle in there, it's, it's tight, it's twisted. So I use the first finger of my left hand to kind of create some slack on that stitch to make it easy to get my needle in. And then on make one left, my trick is to put the, put the needle in the front loop of the stitch where it's easy and then roll it over to the back loop. Okay, I want to demonstrate the cable cast on one more time. We are on row three. And the cable cast on on the wrong side of the work is the same thing. I'm going to put the needle in between those two stitches. And it, it is kind of a crazy place. It is just between those two stitches and that void between the two stitches. Wrap and pull that through and pull it long and kind of twist it when you put it up on the needle. Tighten it a little bit, but not too much. And now you can tighten it up all the way. And that is how we're going to work the, the short rows for the back neck shaping. There's going to be more casting on. The purl rows are um, at the beginning, you know, we had that cable cast on, but then you just purl across. And then when you get to the knit side, it's always make one right, knit one, slip marker, make one left until you get to the next marker, the same thing over and over again. And then we will eventually get to this point. And normally I steam out my samples that I show in the video to make everything look really nice. Um, uh, but this one, I wanted to leave it just as it is so you can see it doesn't look like anything at this point. It is just all curled up and kind of messy. And we are ready to, excuse my reach here, we are ready to join in the round. And I'm getting myself a different marker, a marker that looks different than the other ones that I'm using. I'm using these pretty little ring markers. This time it's going to be something different so that I can distinguish the beginning of the round from the raglan increase places. And just like any time you're joining in the round, you want to make sure that Nothing is twisted, everything's flat. I have my working yarn over here on the right. And I'm gonna join, um, when I join, I'm gonna knit this stitch. And when that happens, the whole thing is gonna be joined in the round. So I'll place this marker on the left, on the right needle. And then I think all I'm doing is just 
knitting across on this row. No, I think it's actually an in, of course it is, it's a right side row. And that's how you're gonna join in the round. And when you do, you will see that your, uh, let me try to make some sense of this. The beginning of your round is here at the, let me get this right, I don't wanna say it incorrectly, is here at the, the right front neck. Oh, that's confusing. I'll show you on the bigger piece. It's not at the very center of the neck. It's over on the right side of the neck. And I want to show this bigger piece now because I want you to understand exactly what's happening with this raglan thing. So far, it's just been increases. And this piece, I am ready to separate for the sleeves. And this is where it starts to make a lot more sense. So the beginning of your round is here. Like I said, it's not at the center front. It's kind of over at the right front. That's where it belongs. All the instructions make sense like that. And if we look at this this way, we have our four increase spots are really easy to see, right? Because you have these big lines going up there. This is the front of the sweater. This is the back of the sweater. And these are the sleeves. And that's what you've been working on this whole time while you've been doing these increases. You've been knitting the front, the sleeves, and the back. And then eventually it gets to be this shape and it gets to be big. And then we're going to separate the sleeves and just knit the body. And that's what you'll be working on. This is, um, this is kind of the bulk of the knitting right here is getting the shoulders and everything done. And in the next section, we're going to talk about separating the sleeves. And so we'll be using this piece again. So you can follow your pattern and just keep knitting round and around and doing um, your increases and then every other round is just a plain knit round without any increases. It's all very clear in the pattern. And then next up we're going to talk about the next big step in raglan sweater knitting which is separating the sleeves. After you've been knitting around and around and around for a while, you get to a point where the sweater, the sweater, the pattern's going to tell you that you can go ahead and separate the sleeves for your size, but you don't exactly have to do that. You can try it on to make sure that it's all gonna fit. So you'll have a piece that looks, this, this is the reason that I love raglan sweaters so much. This is why they're exciting, is because you can do this. Um, and I actually, I knit a bottom-up sweater not too long ago and I followed all the instructions and I measured and I measured myself and I measured the sweater and it still ended up being too short for me and so I gave it to my friend Casey and it looks great on her and it fits her perfectly but you don't ever have that problem with top-down raglans okay back to this sweater <clears throat> this is you're gonna end up with something that looks like this right and it's on the needles right now, so you can't really try it on while it's on the needles, but you can slip these stitches onto scrap yarn, or if you have an interchangeable needle set, you can put it on a really, really long needle or connect two needles together so you can um, have it on a really, really long needle. And once it's on the long needle, pop this thing over your head and then check at the, the raglan points, check at the stitch markers. Um, you might want some help for this. Match them up under your arms to make sure that it fits comfortably. If you can't get them matched up under your arms or it seems like it's gonna be way too tight once it gets around the bust, keep knitting, keep increasing a little bit. You can kind of go off pattern a little bit because it won't matter. It won't, I'll explain to you how to, to well, it's hardly anything. <laughs> All you want to do is if your stitch count doesn't match up with the number you need for the bottom ribbing, that's kind of the only thing you have to do is get it, get it back to, um, in this case, a one by one rib, an even number. You can do that. So make sure it's matching up. Make sure it's big enough. If, you, if it seems kind of too baggy, you might want to undo a few stitches. But then once you know it's going to fit, then we're ready to separate the sleeves. And that is what I'm going to demonstrate here now. So let's go and take a look. So I've just decided that this is going to be a perfect fit, so I'm ready to separate the sleeves. And this part of the pattern, we remove the markers as we come to them. We're going to reposition the markers. I do have this on a, a longer circular than I would normally use for demonstration purposes.
Okay, get to the first marker, remove that marker, and have yourself some scrap yarn and a tapestry needle ready to go. I always have leftover bits of sock yarn that I use for stuff like this. I'm going to slip all of the sleeve stitches up to the next marker onto this scrap yarn. We'll come back to these stitches later. Okay, and remove that marker. And then here's what I always do. I always take a little bit of yarn, leave myself a little extra in case, you know, I or whoever I'm knitting a sweater for wants to try it on. And then I tie that in a knot just to make sure that's not going anywhere. I want to know that's not going anywhere. I'm going to turn the work and we're going to do the cable cast on again. So between those two stitches, I'm going to cast on four. Cast on four and place a marker. This is the new beginning of my round, and I'm going to cast on four more. Okay, we just finished the underarm area there. So you turn the work back to the direction we were going and we have to connect these two, nothing special to it. We're just going to start knitting. All these sleeve stitches are gonna stay here. We're just gonna start knitting with the next stitch on the needle. Okay, and that's the underarm area there. And what you're going to do is knit up to the next marker, remove the marker, slip all of the stitches between the two markers onto scrap yarn again, do the cable cast on for four stitches, place a marker, and do um, cast on four more stitches using the cable cast on. And then you, no more raglan increases, you're just going to knit around and around until you get to the length of sweater that you want. And there's um, instructions in the pattern for how to do that. And you will have something that looks like this, but on both sides. I think it's cute. Can you tell I love top-down raglan sweaters? <laughs> I really do. Um, that's pretty much a sweater. You're going to pick up the stitches and knit the sleeves. Just put your needle back into those stitches and knit the sleeves and work a one by one rib at the bottom. Um, the pattern's really clear about this pattern is really well written. That's one of the reasons I was excited about doing this sweater for Love Knitting because the pattern is so well written. Um, just follow the instructions for your size. If you want a little bit longer sleeves, that's great. If you want a little bit shorter body, that's great. It's part of the beauty of making your own clothes. And next up, we are going to talk about the um, brioche stitch color. In this section, we're going to cover the last bit of the sweater, which is the brioche collar. And it's really fun to knit. Um, because it's big, chunky yarn, it's really easy to see what you're doing. If you are intimidated by the brioche stitch, I will tell you, you can substitute, substitute Fisherman's Rib, which is a little bit easier to work. Um, I'll give you a link um, 
on my website to my fisherman rib video. I think I'm running out of links I can give in this video. That's why I said that. Just go to my website for this tutorial and I have a link to that. But I'm going to show you how to work it. It's not that hard. We're going to pick up stitches around the neckline and then knit the brioche collar. So let's go ahead and take a look. This is the collar that I have here, the rough edge neckline. And I'm going to just give you um, quick demonstration on picking up and knitting because the pattern's really clear about doing this. And I'm using a double pointed needle because I'm all out of circulars. I have samples on every single circular, but the technique's the same. So I stuck my needle in under both legs of the V here. And I'm going to just wrap that needle, leaving myself a little tail to weave in and pull that through. And then go to the next one wrap it and pull it through under both legs of the V, remember? And you're going to pick up one for one here along the top of the sleeves, <coughs> excuse me, and the um, back neckline. And then I do want to demonstrate how it gets a little trickier here when you get to where we did the shaping in the front. But nothing to worry about. Really, if your stitch count's a little bit off, that's okay. It doesn't have to be the exact number. Just make sure it looks good, and that's what I'm going to show you how to do. And the pattern, again, tells you exactly how many to pick up. So we're going under both legs, and right here, you know, I don't really want to put my needle in here. I want to make sure you can see this. I don't really want to put my needle in here to pick up that stitch because there's already a little gap there. So I'm going to fudge it a little bit and skip that one and pick up a little extra here and then take a look. Yes, that looks good. It is not pulling with a big hole because if I had picked it up here and then pulled on it, you see it's creating kind of two big holes. So I fixed that, and this is not, I'm, I'm not an expert in exactly where to pick things up. Just some trial and error. Whoops. Some splitting of stitches so you can't get it pulled through, like I'm doing here. Because I already stuck the needle in there, I think. Oh my goodness. There we go. <laughs> Just force it through. Uh, and then into the next one here. And every time you pick up a stitch on this area, just give it a tug and make sure that there aren't any holes and it looks good. That's my best advice for you. Because picking up along the back edge is, is easy because it's just one for one. So next, let's work on this brioche collar. So many samples I have going in this video. So here is my beautiful smooshy. This yarn is so nice and the stitch, stitch definition is so beautiful that this looks good. Okay, I have a little bit going here. The, um, the, rows are, the rounds are the same though and it's not, let me back up here. <laughs> Mine isn't attached to a sweater, that's okay. The technique's going to be the same. I also have a little bit going here but that's okay because the technique's going to be the same. And here we go with round one. And the British instructions say yarn forward, slip one, and that's you just slip as if to purl, right, without working the stitch, and then BRP, which is brioche stitch purl, and I'm going to actually yarn forward here to purl the next two legs of the stitch together, which is a yarn over and a purl stitch. Okay, your yarn's already in front, slip one. You know, what I did I actually in my pattern, I have little arrows um, uh, reversing the yarn forward and the slip one. I think it makes more sense slip one then yarn forward. Okay, slip one, yarn forward, purl those two halves together. Let me get some yarn going here because I'm going to start flying. Slip one, yarn forward, purl those two st stitches together. Mm. 
they're just two rounds to work in brioche stitch in the round because we're not doing any increases or anything and I want to finish this round so I can show you what the next round looks like Slip one, yarn forward, purl those two together. I've actually heard someone say that the, the two that you're purling together, one is just a scarf that the, the yarn over is just a scarf that the stitch is wearing. You can work those two together. This yarn feels so nice. Ever since I did this tutorial or got everything together for this tutorial, this yarn has become my favorite yarn for demonstrations. So you're going to be seeing a lot more paint box wool mix chunky in my videos because I love the stitch definition. I love the way this feels. Okay, I'm up to my marker now. Um, and I'm ready to work round two. And I'm going to slip the marker. I'm going to put the yarn in back because we're going to start with a, a brioche stitch knit, which I'm going to knit the stitch and the scarf it's wearing together. And you'll see, whoops, there goes my marker. You'll see this column of stitches here. Those are knit stitches. So you know you're on track because the first stitch here is a knit and it's following up this column of knit stitches. So I'm going to brioche, knit those two together, yarn forward, slip one. And then I'm going to need to yarn back to work the next brioche knit stitch but I'm, a, I'm going to yarn um, back over the needle so I can make the scarf on that next stitch. Okay, so yarn forward, slip one. And again, I'm going to brioche knit these two together. Yarn forward, slip one. And then I'm going to knit this. Th that's the sequence. Let me be clear about this. It's brioche knit, yarn forward, slip one, brioche knit, yarn forward, slip one. That's it. So I'm going to brioche knit, yarn forward, slip one. And when I go back to brioche knit now, I'm going to just flop the yarn over the needle. I'm not going to pull it forward between the two needles, over the needle, so we get that scarf. Brioche knit, yarn forward, slip one, and then going back to brioche knit, flopping that yarn over the needle, yarn forward, slip one, brioche knit, over the needle, yarn forward, slip one. Such a pretty stitch you get, and it's the same on both sides. Well, that was fun. I love all the elements of this sweater. I love top-down raglans. I hope you enjoyed it too. Again, if you want to get your free copy of the pattern and uh, pick your color of, of paint box yarn for your sweater, just click the little I in the upper right-hand corner and that will take you to my website where all of the information will be there. I'll also list out all the colors that I showed here in this video. And what else do I need to tell you? I don't think there's anything else. But many thanks to Love Knitting for sponsoring this video and bringing this free pattern to us. I hope you enjoy it. Good luck.